hand, you know, white could choose to play bishop takes f6 next as well, after which the d5 outpost would serve him as a powerful point from which to conduct strategical operations for the rest of the game. MacDonald, however, had other ideas, and it was at this point that the game really came to life, because here he played the gutsy move knight takes d5, allowing his queen to get chopped off for some very active compensation. This is very much in the spirit of romantic era chess and a great conception from the Irishman. Black could have played queen f8 instead and maintained an enduring advantage, but although it's solid and strong, it's also quite passive. In this line he will get great activity, as I said, for the material investment, and Le Bourdonnais was more than happy to accept the material sacrifice with bishop takes e7. It also means that black won't be castling any time soon, and with an unopposed queen, this is very attractive to an attacking player such as Le Bourdonnais. Really, he has no other choice. He can decline with bishop takes d5, but this gives black a huge edge after queen c7, simply moving away from the attack of the bishop and preparing c-file activity in conjunction with knight c6 coming next and a big positional advantage as well as being two pawns up. Black is strategically winning here. If after knight c6 white plays bishop takes c6 then black can answer with b takes c6 and a huge pawn center. If white doesn't take then bishop takes f3 next for black followed up with knight d4 looks powerful. And it's important to note here that if white declines the queen differently for example, with rook takes d5, or e takes d5, he's simply left a piece down after bishop takes f3, removing the only defender of the g5 bishop, which the black queen is attacking. If it snaps up the queen now, black won't recapture, of course, but play instead bishop takes e2 with check and finish a piece up, along with the two pawns after the smoke clears. Bishop takes e7, bishop takes e2 check, king takes e2, king takes e7, and black is of course completely winning here. The third and final option instead of snapping up the queen is to play a bishop b5 check, but this achieves little and merely allows black to get another piece into the game with knight c6, after which the themes will be identical to the ones we are about to look at in the game continuation anyway. If we return to it now after bishop takes e7 MacDonald answers knight e3 check and indeed this is the only option for black or his sacrifice will not be worthwhile I think it was Nimzovic who said a knight in the center on the opponent's sixth rank is at least as strong as a rook and that's certainly the case here from e3 a square that's achieved with check the knight exerts huge positional and tactical pressure on the white position. Achieving such a piece is the positional player's dream come true, and it can be seldom achieved without making concessions in one's own position. MacDonald showed computer-like accuracy in his assessment of all resulting positions from this point forwards, and indeed it's a fact that black is better in all variations. He has two pawns and two minor pieces for his queen, and you know, as the activity settles down here, as well as total domination on the dark squares and this beautifully posted knight on e3. Le Bourdonnais, of course, is not without counterplay with a queen on the board, and it's very interesting to see how both players approach the game from herein. White's in check, and there's only one move worth considering, which is the one Le Bourdonnais played king e1. He can uh, give the queen back immediately with queen takes e3 instead, but as I said black is better after f takes e3, despite giving one of the pawns back, because uh, bishop takes d6 can be played now, but next comes knight c6 and there is absolutely zero compensation for the pawn white is down, as well as all resulting play belonging to black and moving the king to g1 instead of taking the queen is also bad instead of king e1 if uh, king g1 then uh, knight takes d1 with check from the bishop 
on b6 and white is in all sorts of trouble and the same is true as if uh, he moves his king to f2 instead so to return to the game continuation uh, Le Bourdonnais has just played king e1 so now comes king takes e7 and uh, Le Bourdonnais wasted no time in getting his queen active and played queen d3 threatening immediately to take on d6 with a powerful penetration down the d-file he was unconcerned with knight takes d1 uh, you know willing to give up an exchange because you know it would be incorrect to give up such a powerful piece as the e3 knight even if it does win the exchange black's advantage would be lessened as a result but instead of immediately queen d3 it may have been more prudent to challenge the g4 bishop with uh, h3 instead because uh, this may give more chances for counterplay bishop takes f3 is best here if instead bishop h5 to maintain the pin under under the reasoning that the g4 push you know to get rid of the bishop is not possible because of en passant white is looking active now after bishop d5 threatening bishop takes b7 and also rook c1 with c file activity after black snaps off to f3 knight uh, with bishop takes f3 which would be the right move g takes f3 is forced if uh, queen takes f3 then a c4 bishop is dropping which shows already some of the strength of the e3 knight black's best move here is knight c6 again intending to exploit the central dark squares with knight d4 next which is in accordance with the correct strategy after removing the f3 knight but at least white would have the g file for counterplay which could become dangerous in conjunction with his unopposed light square bishop the best for white here is to consolidate slightly with uh, bishop b3 keeping everything solid and preparing to give up the exchange if knight d4 as it's practically forced to relieve the resulting pressure and with that in mind it's almost certainly best for black to delay it for a moment and play rook a c8 now getting another piece into the game and taking control of the open c file white can answer in suit with the rook g1 taking the g file and threatening rook takes g7 check with activity and provoking g6 which apparently solves all of black's problems white would love to penetrate now somehow with his queen for instance on the light squares with queen c4 or the g-file with queen g2 but the superb e3 knight prevents both of these entrances white's best bet here is to move his rook out of the line of the fire of the b6 bishop with uh, rook g5 and after knight d4 give up the exchange with the rook takes d4 but black is still a lot better after bishop takes d4 and total positional lockdown he can follow up with rook c7 rook h c8 and torture white until he resigns this is one of those wonderful positions where a rook and minor piece outplay a queen brilliantly such positions are a real pleasure to play but let's return to the game continuation before we get sidetracked any further so queen d3 is what Le Bourdonnais has just played and uh, MacDonald continued with rook d8 which is defending solid, solidly the d6 pawn in conjunction with the black king who is also playing an active defensive role and in little danger on e7 and this is a good solid defensive move but at least according to the computer bishop c5 was slightly better after rook d8 the position is objectively equal although strategically I'm almost certain black remains on top. Another option that looks tempting is knight takes g2 check you know snapping up a pawn with check but is dangerous after king e2 with a queen d5 and a light square penetration threatened now that the knight is no longer eyeing d5 as it was from e3. Also white will be able to use the g file and uh, queen takes d6 is also threatened and uh, rook d8 is a move too late because then queen d5 will be decisive 
The best bet for black is bishop d4, but now it's white who's better after rook hg1 attacking the knight, so knight e3. If instead bishop takes g1, queen takes d6, mates in 2, white has only one move, king e8, and now simply queen d8 is mate. So we see that black must be careful and not get impatient with his position. Snapping up material before the time is ripe would be a gross error. Even after knight e3, instead of bishop takes g1, if we return to it, knight e3, now rook takes g4, knight takes g4, knight takes d4, e takes d4, queen takes d4, and suddenly white is winning. All of the active black pieces are gone, and on the contrary, he is hugely underdeveloped with his king in the center of a dangerously open board and facing a swift defeat. The lesson here is not to rush when you have a positional advantage and to get more pieces involved if some of them remain undeveloped, which indeed is what MacDonald did in the game itself with uh, his rook d8. So how does the border nay continue now? The answer is with the rook d2 removing the option of uh, knight takes d1 but allowing bishop a5 which is going to pin the rook if black wants to win the exchange a different way but it would be crazy to give up either of these two superbly placed pieces for rook. Uh, one of the ideas of rook d2 is also to defend g2 and prepares rook e2 and an exchange sack in order to get the e3 knight off the board which you know, after that there would be good play for white and the computer again preferred h3 here challenging the g4 bishop and following up with the very passive looking rook h2 